Okay, hello everyone. So what I'd like to do today is to show you how to do a research essay. Um, and this is kind of a tricky thing because it is such a huge monstrosity. Um, so I've tried to simplify it into kind of nine easy sort of steps. Let me walk you through these. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, uh, the bibliography I have. I'm going to show you different things that I've done with my facts. Um, and then I'm going to actually show you four different levels of essays that I could pull out of this. Um, actually, let me just put this one here. So um, let's go back to this. When you're doing research essay, you can research something historical. You can research something modern. Um, it could be something as simple as like a, like, let's say you're starting in grade four or five, six, and you're doing a research essay just on dogs. And you're not even trying to prove an argument. You're just researching dogs. Um, you can still make an essay. Um, and, and maybe you're trying to like make an argument with something historical, like, you know, Napoleon, really, whatever, 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 okay? You, 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 you choose. Maybe you're trying to do a research essay, and the reason why it's not just simply an argumentative essay is, and actually, let me just back up. In my opinion, the difference between a research essay and an argumentative essay is with a research essay, you actually have to rely more on um, facts that you have researched but in an argumentative essay, you might actually still do the same sort of thing. Um, but based on who you are, your position, you might not have to cite other people to prove your arguments. But definitely in a research essay, it is like 90% fact and well, maybe not 90% fact, but like 80% fact and 20% argument. Um, but it's facts that you had to look up out of other like books and websites and stuff. Um, with like an argumentative essay, it's, it's actually a very sort of similar sort of thing. You're still making an argument, you're still trying to prove something, um, but you might not have to do the research part of it in order to write your essay. So you might be sitting there thinking like, what's the difference? So if, if you're thinking that, then probably the easiest thing to do is just think it is the exact same thing as an argumentative essay, but you need to do research for the arguments that you are making. You can't just simply make logical arguments. You have to make fact-based arguments that have been um, observed by other people and recorded in literature. So um, step one, find resources. Let's say again, for, so I, I simply went through all the books I happen to currently own and I for some reason own a lot of books on space. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to write an essay on space. Um, but I'm really into history. So really, I probably should have just gone to the library and gotten a bunch of books on history. Um, but let's say find resources. Let's say you really want to research, um, I mean, Napoleon, there's actually so much written on Napoleon, you actually can't read it all in your whole life. That's kind of a crazy idea. Um, but let's say for some reason you want to research something or someone, and there's only like two books written about it, probably not off to a really good start. So I would then at that point recommend that you think of a different topic. Um, you know, it's, there, there's something to be said about, I mean, like Wikipedia, it has good information. Like, yes, people can edit it, but it's a really good starting point. As long as it's not your only point, it's, it's a good starting point. Um, but if all you can find on your topic is a Wikipedia page or similar, like blogs, again, I wouldn't use that. Like you might actually find 30 websites, but if none of them are really credible, you're going to have a really hard time having, you know, credible research. So when it says find resources, find something that has been put together in, in the form of a book at least a few times. And then you can also use websites to supplement it, but it's kind of nice to have something that's been published, it's been vetted, um, and you know it's a, it's a good place to start. So I would say, like, let's say you're starting in, you know, grade four, five, six, seven, eight, who cares, and you're writing in a research essay, I would have at least three books and three websites. And then at least you've got a really good beginning point and you're, you're really experimenting using different sources and you're not just compiling a whole bunch of facts and regurgitating a book or a website. Okay, part number two is where you have to decide the three things that you want to talk about. So um, let's say, um, let's say we're researching, I don't know, dogs and why dogs make good pets. You know, maybe the first body paragraph you're going to talk about is like because, you know, they um, are super fun and they're engaging and active. Maybe the second thing is you're going to research all the different ways that, you know, they're really good at being protective. Um, and then maybe the third one is you're going to look at all the ways that they get you out there walking around and give you exercise, right? So you're going to have to think of the three, basically your three main arguments within your argument. Um, uh, and so you just have to make a decision. What are the three things that you're going to divide your facts into? Because otherwise, if you don't divide your facts, you're just going to have, you're rambling or you're going to basically create a mini book. Um, that's like a summary of a book you just read. It's not not even like your own book. It's just a summary. Um, next, you're going to write down your facts by source. So let me show you what I'm doing as, as I go through. So right now, 
Um, so let's say for, number one, you're finding your books, you've got your websites. Number two, you're like, okay, I'm gonna write about this, this, this. Number three is you're writing down your facts by source. And let me show you, actually, let me show you what it says, find resources. This is where I'm at. So I was looking at space and I, I didn't really know what to, to write about. So just, you know, I, I knew though I was gonna write about space because I had the books. And so here's my process is I was just, I just started reading the books and I'm like, oh, okay, what, what's, what's fascinating? And as I was reading these books about space, I realized number one, I know nothing about space. And number two is space sounds really dangerous. Like it, it, I know all of these people want like space travel and exploration. And I think that's fabulous, but I was blown away by how many scary things are out there, like comets and asteroids and meteors and like, you know, radiation and gas balls. And I don't know, it's just crazy. So as I was reading it, I was like, wow, like, I think I'm just going to say that space is actually unsafe. Like it's a very simple statement, but I was like, okay, like let's start in a simple place. So all of the things that I looked at, they were all, all of my books, you're going to notice. So I just like the eyewitness visual dictionary of the universe. And then I've got, oh, well, where's my other one? Um, a national geographic, little kids, first big book of space. Um, where's my other one? Um, oh yeah. Space, the universe as you've never seen it before. Um, and so I started off with just three generic books on space. And as I was reading these books on space is when I figured out, oh, I know what I want to write about. I want to write about space is unsafe. Now I still think as an aside, I still think we should definitely have space travel, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of this universe now. <laughs> There's a lot going on in it. Um, so then I decided I'm going to look up three different websites and I think I ended up finding four and I just Googled is space safe. And this is what I found out. I got this article here. It's like, how safe can we really make space for future tourists? Then I got dangers of space travel. Um, where else did I get? I got, um, what happens to the human body in space? And then is the universe too dangerous for life? Now I'm going to talk about this at the end, but in case I forget, how did I come up with this bibliography? I use this little website down here, citationmachine.net. Um, years and years and years ago when I had to write a lot of essays, I used, uh, I think it's called Bibme. Um, but now it looks like you actually have to pay for it. Um, and I think there's a number of free websites, so you don't really need to pay for anything. Um, and what I did is I, for this is nice citation machine. I literally typed in the name of the book and it came up with a citation for me. Like I, I really didn't even have to learn how to do this, uh, on my own. Um, and with the website, I literally copy pasted the website into this citation machine.net and it put it together for me. So it was actually, it took no time at all to make this bibliography. Um, and I know that it's done well because it's done by this credible website. So these are the resources that I used. And what I did is this is how I start by organizing uh, my research um, is when I thought, OK, I'm going to I'm going to argue that space is unsafe. I thought maybe I should just argue that space is safe. So I made like a list as I was going through and I took all the facts. So I read the little kid's first big book of space and anything that seemed to either make sense in terms of being safe or unsafe. I wrote down a fact. More than that, I wrote down the page number and that's a huge thing. So you're like page 29, page 31, page 35. And you're going to see like, I've got like a little P and a dot and then I've got a big P and a dot. And it's like, sometimes like this doesn't even look really nice, but we don't have to worry about that yet. This is still like kind of rough copy stuff. Um, and I wrote down all the facts. Then I got out my next book and this was the visual dictionary of the universe. And now a lot of the stuff that was already said in this first one, I didn't copy down in this one. Cause I was like, well, why would I recopy it out? Because there's no point in having two you know, resources for the same fact. Um, and so then I wrote down a couple of other things. Then I opened up my next book and it was space, the universe as you've never seen it before. And again, I wrote down everything that seemed to do with it being unsafe, everything that seemed to do with it being safe. Um, and then I had this super space encyclopedia. And again, it was because anything that was already mentioned in these previous books, I was like, no, I'm not going to include. So um, you're going to notice it gets a little bit, you know, thinner there. Then it said, how safe can we really make space for future tourists? Um, this is a really tricky one. I, I actually, I, I found the article and I read it. So I thought, no, I'm going to cite it just, you know, in my bibliography. Um, cause I'd hate for someone to say, oh, you didn't cite it. And subconsciously some ideas came through, but I, I didn't really find much of much use in there. Um, but then I found this one is the universe too dangerous for life. And I found a ton of information in there, but you're going to notice, I just copy pasted these massive paragraphs, which later I'm going to deal with, but I didn't want to, you know, take up the ideas too soon because I thought, well, I don't really know how I'm going to argue it. I don't know how that's going to unfold. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to do this like a bit at a time. So anyways, then I found this other website, dangerous of space travel. I couldn't find anything on there that said it was safe. It was like, it was all dangerous. <laughs> um, I wrote down some facts and then the human body in space. And this is everything to do with like what happens to us when we're in space. 
Um, and so these are, you're going to see it's organized by, the first one is organized by book, the second one is by book, the third one is by book, fourth one is by book, then I, then I go into my online resources. So my facts all have either page numbers, if they're in a book, and, if, and, and even if they're not in a book, whatever they're in, I, I, I keep all my facts together from the same source, the same place that I got it from. So that is, when I look at my steps, I did this out of my three body paragraphs. I kind of already did that because, uh, actually, no, I haven't even done that yet. Um, I mentally did that in my mind. But as I was getting, actually, no, you know what? I kind of did that as I went along, as I was getting my, my space. So you know what? I actually probably could switch around number two and number three. Um, I decided after reading through all these facts that I was reading in the book, I'm like, wow, there's a lot to do with like, there's a lot of rocks and comets and asteroids and stuff like stuff floating around in space that you can hit, hit into. So I was like, okay, that's going to be one of my, one of my body paragraphs is collisions, right? Like you could, you could bump into stuff in space. Number two, I wanted to talk about, um, radiation. There seems to be a lot of radiation out there in the sun, um, or, um, in the universe. And uh, a lot of it we're protected from on earth because of our ozone layer. Um, and we're just away from all of the stuff that's like exploding. Um, and so then I thought, okay, yeah, um, number two, I'm going to talk about radiation. And number three, there actually was quite a bit to do with gravity and how even just floating around in space is actually hard on your body. But then there's other things like black holes that tend to do with gravity that is, you know, also not pleasant. So um, when it said decide on the three body paragraphs, that's, you know, I kind of did that actually as I was, as I was writing down my facts. So I've actually kind of done one, two, and three at this point by having, so when it said find my resources, there's my resources, I found it. And when it said write down the facts by source, there it is, this is what I've done. It's like, here's my facts and they're grouped by book, by source. And then I've decided on my three body paragraphs. So then it says organize your facts into the three body paragraphs. So this is the next one. So what I've done now is I, I made like a little box for my introduction and I've got a couple of facts and I end up actually not using two of them in any of my essays. And that's fine too. Like this is, we're part of, imagine it's like, you're like farming and just because you plant it doesn't mean you have to eat it, right? Like I might come up and you're like, eh, no, that's good corn, but I'm not going to eat it. So this is our introduction. I've got a couple facts that are kind of generic sort of sounding that might help me to kind of introduce my essay. Um, but I don't actually have to have facts in my introduction, but I, I kind of want to. My first body paragraph is I'm going to talk all about the radiation. So what, let me show you actually before I get back to this. Body paragraph two, I'm talking about all um, how gravity changes is, is really hard on the body. And then I'm going to talk about collision in the universe. So like, could you run into an asteroid or a, a supernova, right? And then I've got my conclusion. Underneath though, I've actually still kept all the facts that I didn't organize because I thought, well, I don't want to get rid of them because what if I end up needing more facts? So what I did is everything with radiation, I took from the book. So like here, do you see how this is organized by book? I copy pasted it from the book, like down here. So I would have like, you know, taken a fact, you know, I highlight it, you know, control C, I come up here, control V, and then I, you know, move my fact around. So when you see, let me just zoom in so you guys can see, this here is a quote from one source, cause it says it's, and I kind of um, short formed it like visual. It was from the, uh, what was it called? The visual, the eyewitness visual dictionary of the universe. Like I'm not gonna write in all those words next to my fact, but I just wrote in visual. The next one, this I got from the website, the article all about um, the dangers of being in space. This one I got from the book entitled Space, something else. Um, this is the one about the human body. So you can see I've actually got all of my sources are now mixed in, but every one of these facts has to do with radiation. And they're not in order yet, like that's kind of my next step. But they're just kind of jammed. It's almost like taking um, like marbles and you're like, okay, I've got a big bag of marbles. Now my blue marbles are going here. My red marbles are going here. My green marbles are going there. That's kind of all I've done. Um, but I haven't sorted out my marbles by like size or whatever else is going on with the marbles, but you know, I've, they're chunks now. Okay. So I've got my radiation is in one box. I've got the gravitational differences is in another box and I've got my collision is in a third box. And even down here in my conclusion, I have a really interesting little quote that kind of makes us think. So I thought, you know, and I don't have to use it. I do end up using it, but I don't have to use it. So that is step four. I organized my facts into the three body paragraphs. Okay, so what I did is I took my facts that are here from my sources and I put them into groups that made kind of sense. Fact, or if not fact five, step five is it says organize your facts within the three body paragraphs. So that's what I do here. So you can see the difference. So let me just zoom out a little bit. So do you see how my first fact here, it says cool background radiation 
But here, actually, my first fact is on Earth, we are shielded by the planets, blah, blah, blah. Here, I've moved a cool radiation to actually point number two. So what I did is I, I took all of the facts and I said, actually, the very first thing I did is I, is I, in bold, I made the main idea of each fact stand out so that I could see it. Like, I'm like, okay, on Earth, we're shielded, background radiation, risks from radiation, increased risk of cancer. We've got galactic cosmic rays, sources of catastrophe, havoc on the biosphere, beams of radiation. Right, like I've got it so that I can easily see what I'm dealing with. Once I did that, then I had to say, okay, like I've got, I gotta kind of put them in an order that makes sense, right? Like it's like when you have a meal, you know, it's like appetizer, you meal, dessert, right? Um, I mean, I, I typically just eat whatever, whenever. So to me, it wouldn't be too weird being like, oh, I'll start with dessert, who cares? Um, but in an essay, it actually matters, right? Like when you're having, like, when you go to a wedding, it would be really weird to be like, desserts first, you know. <laughs> People want appetizers first. That's just kind of what they're expecting. Same with an essay. So you kind of, within the boxes, you kind of have to make your facts go in a normal order, something that makes sense. Now, it, there could be 10,000 possibilities of, of the order that you put your facts in that would all make sense. So long as it makes sense. It doesn't, it, there's, it's not one right way of making sense. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to start with like a generic sort of statement, like, you know, on Earth we're safe. And then I move from Earth into universe and I talk about background radiation. And then I go down to, you know, what actually happens though if you're exposed to the radiation. Like, you know, you're simply just being in the atmosphere, like, because there is more radiation in the atmosphere. Then we get into what's kind of causing this radiation. And then we get into like the mega explosions of radiation, right? So I'm kind of building here. Um, and so, I don't know, I thought that kind of made sense. The next one we're talking about gravitational differences. So we're saying how like I'm starting off with a quote that says, you know, if you if you're transitioning, it, it's harder on your body, you know, and then what actually happens to your body when, you know, you're you're exposed to, you know, different types of gravity or different, I guess, poles of gravity. And then we get into actually like black holes because black holes are a gravitational difference. And I mean, that that's pretty life altering if you end up in a black hole. <laughs> um, and so we get from here the, the the least invasive to the most invasive. Right, so we're kind of I'm saving the the, the the scariest, darkest facts for later, and the and the lightest, most interesting, or um, the gentle facts earlier on. Then we talk about my third body paragraph is I want to talk about collision, like what happens, what are you running into in space, and so I'm starting off with with the easier stuff, right? Again, like you could run into a rock or a ring of rocks or like an asteroid or a comet, and then stars that are hot, glowing gas. And then I get into, well, what happens if you run into a star that's exploding, right? And then we, a star that's exploding is a supernova. And then we talk about dark matter and invisible matter and entire galaxies colliding, right? So I start off with little facts and I work my way up to the bigger facts. Um, so that's a normal order. I could have started with this fact and then worked my way in a descending order. Doesn't really matter as long as it's a logical order. And I'm not just going, okay, galaxies, now I'm going to do chunks of rock. And oh, look at this, a supernova. Hey, invisible matter, an asteroid. Or like that's just, just bouncing all over the place. That makes no sense. Um, so that was uh, step number five organize your facts within the body paragraphs. This is now the hard one. It says turn the facts into paragraphs. This one is really hard to show you because then I just had to. Oh, did I skip one? <laughs> Oh, that's too bad. Actually, I skipped a step on this page here. Oh, well, too bad. Let me show it to you now anyways. One of the things you need to learn is how to take someone's idea and report their idea. So let's say your friend looks out the window and it's raining outside and your friend says, it is raining. If your other friend is like, yo, what did they say? You're like, you know, Mark said it is raining. <laughs> That is a direct quote. You are taking Mark's words like, it is raining. And you're saying to your other friend, let's say it's Sophie. Sophie's like, what did Mark say? And Mark said, it is raining. And you're like, oh, Mark said, it is raining. That's a direct quote. You are not changing any of Mark's words. But if Mark says, it is raining, and Sophie says, what did Mark say? I might be like, oh, Mark was kind of rambling about how it's raining outside. I'm, he didn't say it's raining outside. He said, it is raining, right? Like I've changed his words. That makes it more indirect, right? It's taking the same idea, but putting it into different words. So here's the tricky thing, is we can't have everything direct and we can't have everything indirect. Here are the pros and cons of each. If something is direct, it's really a powerful statement because usually it is said the best way that it could be said. Like if you try to reword it, it's not gonna sound as good. And so you really wanna save your best moments of direct quoting for the for the hardest to reword sentences. Um, 
But the problem is if everything is a direct quote, it ends up sounding like a laundry list or like a grocery list where it's just like boom, 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 fact, 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 fact. Um, and there's not a lot of style. It's going to sound very correct. It's going to sound very authoritative, but it's not going to sound stylistic. It's not going to sound fluid. Um, the opposite is true with the indirect. It's going to sound very fluid, but maybe not as credible because it's those direct quotes that give you authority and give you like power in your essay. And if you don't have any of those, then it's going to sound like a really fluid, nice, sweet conversation, but it's not going to sound impressive or authoritative. It's just going to sound, um, smooth and flowing. Um, so you want kind of a mix and if anything, maybe like 60, 40, where you have more indirect than direct. Right. And so what I did is anything that was indirect, I highlighted in green and I kept the best of the best for my yellow, for my direct quotes. So hang on a second, I just have to take a sip of water. Here. So, um, before you even start turning these into sentences, you need to decide, um, which ones are you keeping as is and which ones are you like, no, I can reword that. I can put that in slightly different words. Usually the rule of thumb is anything that is three words or more in a row that you've copied, it, then that's, that's plagiarism if you don't say where you got it from. Um, and so basically uh, if you cannot reword, um, like greater than three words, I would keep it as a direct quote. So for example, let me just show you what I mean by this. Here the quote is cool background radiation. I can actually keep the term background radiation and I don't have to put it in direct quotes, but I am still going to quote it. I'm still going to show or not quote it. I'm going to reference it. What that means is I'm going to tell the reader I got this idea from this source. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell people exactly like in this one book on page six, that's where I got that idea. So they know that I'm not copying their words. Um, but I don't have to have the word cool in there. I can say there is continual radiation that takes place in the background. Well, that's the same idea. I've just put it in different words or even more so just order, different word order. With something like this though, this is a huge paragraph. Uh, actually, no, there's two there, but let's say I took this one here. I can easily reword this and say something like, you know, when you're exposed to, you know, radiation in space, a lot of astronauts, you know, might have an increase of cancer, I don't have to say increased risk, or I might say they, they are more prone to cancer. They may have things such as, well, actually, actually I can't say such as heart disease, but they may suffer from heart disease, right? That's only two words in a row. And, and I could go on and on like that. And so to me, this one actually, there's a lot of interesting ideas that I'm, I'm really able to reword. So I'm gonna make that one indirect. Um, so same thing down here with my gravitational differences. Um, this one was hard because all of these ones in yellow, I, I was like, I really like how it's written. I don't want to mess with this. I want to keep it the way it is. So then in collision, I really had to push myself to find more that I was like, okay, yep, I can put this into indirect. I can change the wording so that that way um, it's it's not all direct quotes. So that was that step that I forgot, sorry, to put in this little hint. Step, what is this? Five and a half. Um, okay, then we need to turn it into paragraphs. Let me show you. So I've got four essays here. I'm going to read maybe three of them to you because the last two are actually quite similar. Um, but when you take your facts, what I did is I literally took a word document and I took my facts and I just started typing until, you know, there were, there were sentences around them. Um, step seven is then you would then add transitions and decorative sort of sentences so that it doesn't just sound like you're reading a textbook. You almost want to read something that sounds more like, um, a written discussion um, because sometimes you need that extra little bit of fluff to give it style otherwise it's too staccato and it just feels like a typewriter step eight would be go back and make sure that you've really hammered out your thesis statement because sometimes we write and and at the end of the essay you're like oh that was so good and then you realize like i didn't actually really prove clearly what i said i was going to prove but i did a really good job of explaining and clarifying and giving examples but in your introduction, if you're like, this is what I'm going to do, you better go back through, through your essay and make sure that you did what you said you were going to do. Um, and then nine is you're going to tidy up your footnotes. So let me show you what I mean by all that, because there's so much there that I just said. So in my emerging essay, let's say this is like the worst essay that I could have and still kind of get a mark for. 
um, as you can see, this is one long paragraph, right? This is a, this is a pretty brutal essay. No one wants to read this. And as you can read, let me just let me just read a little bit to you. So I'm going to talk about space, like all the stuff in space that is not safe and is unsafe. Scientists believe the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. Page eight, superspace. The totality of space with its vast structures might be infinite. Superspace. The sun is very hot. As you can see, it's just fact, fact, fact. Then I've got a couple little sentences that are transitions, but they're not really smooth and they don't really add much, right? I've got, then there's radiation. Like, so that was in theory, that was my, that was my introduction. Then there's radiation. Radiation is probably going to be really, really, really bad. So in an emerging essay, even if there's lots of facts, if it's not well written, and if it's not presented in an organized way, and if it's not presented in a way that sounds like you're discussing it, if it's just like you're reading off facts, that's not really, really an essay. That's more just like the beginning of an essay, but it's not, it's not a, an entire essay. So that's kind of what has happened here. And, you know, I, like, I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you because it's terrible. It's just, I'm just reading off facts here. I've got like, after that comes gravity. Gravity is something that sometimes you have and sometimes you don't have. Sometimes I like gravity so that I don't float off into space and, you know, float away. But sometimes gravity is bad because I fall and hurt myself and that sucks, right? Like it's, it's written in a very um, spoken way. So I know I keep saying like, have it like a discussion, but like an academic discussion, not just like a discussion on the sidewalk. Um, and then otherwise, then I'm just, it's like fact, 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 fact. I'm not explaining. I'm not transitioning. I'm not leading my reader along some sort of academic thought here. This is just at the end. I hope you liked my essay and now you know about space. The end. Um, yeah, not an essay, but well, it's an emerging essay. It's a beginning essay. It's a, it's a big, it's a, it's a starting point. Um, what, what worked well? Well, there's a lot of research. That part was really good, right? There's a lot of facts. What did not work? There was hardly any organization and there's no argument development, right? It's just, it's as though someone took in a big breath and they're like, ah, and they're like, la, 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 and they just spewed off everything they knew about space. That's what this feels like, right? Does not feel impressive. But watch this. It's automatically, our developing essay is automatically better, right? Like, look at this. This is our emerging, one big chunk. Ah, oh, organization. Even if it's poorly organized, it at least looks organized. When we look at this, our mind is like, oh, I can do this. I can read this. So let's look what's going on here. We, uh, let me just read you part of this and, and then we'll see how this feels. This essay is going to talk about space. Scientists believe the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. Page eight, superspace. Space is such a big place that its size might be infinite, superspace. People like to think about space travel and going to other places in space. I think that Earth is the safest and that it's kind of crazy to leave our planet because it's so dangerous out there. I'm going to argue that space is for the most part unsafe. I'm going to talk about radiation, gravity, and collision. Now, in all honesty, this is actually really not a bad introduction because First of all, we tell them, where am I? Um, actually, no, I don't have a really good thesis statement in here. Never mind, I just lied. Um, here, I'm going to argue that space is for the most part unsafe. This could be worded better, but hey, we've got a thesis statement. We also are telling people the three body paragraphs that they're gonna talk about, radiation, gravity, and collision. We have, um, you know, an, an interesting little quote. So this is actually really not a bad introduction, but it's not a lovely introduction. Um, like this essay is going to talk about space. This sounds kind of like, um, you know, when you're at like a wedding or a graduation and someone has like the most boring speech of the world, that's how you start off with that kind of quote, right? Um, or this, or this essay is going to talk about space. Like that's so boring. Um, so there's no style to this. There's no intrigue. No one wants to read this. Um, there's no transitions. It's just, um, you know, fact and, you know, brief explanation. So let's read. Now I'm going to talk about radiation, right? It's just so boring. On Earth, we are shielded by the planet's magnetic field and atmosphere from the majority of particles that make up the space radiation environment, human body. In the universe, there is always a cool background radiation. Page six, visual. When people think of space travel, they sometimes forget all of the dangerous things in space, like temperature extremes, being alone, and radiation, which can hurt your body. People who deal with radiation get things like cancer and heart disease. Astronauts are in space where there is more radiation, so they will get more cancer and more heart disease. Radiation can also be found in solar wind and other sorts of rays. So this sounds younger and it, which is not a bad thing, you know, if, if, if a younger person is writing this kind of essay, but to me, this is like a developing essay for like, let's say grade six or seven. Okay. Um, 
you know, it's hard because you might be looking at this thinking, well, what's wrong? Like there's facts and there's explanations. Actually, no, there aren't. That's actually probably what it is. There's facts and there's a little bit of discussion, maybe some clarification. Um, but we don't really seem to have one main idea that is then argued in a methodical way throughout the whole paragraph. It seems more like a collection of quotes with a collection of clarifications, um, which is becoming an essay, but it's still not totally, totally there. Um, and so it kind of carries on like that throughout the rest of this. I mean, you're welcome to pause and kind of read this as you want. So let me just scroll down a bit. And then if you want to pause it and actually read for yourself, you can do that. There we go. So let me show you the difference now. Um, a proficient essay. Let me read you the introduction and maybe you can hear the difference between the proficient and the developing, okay? So it is estimated that 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began to form. This is a very long time for things to be created, move around, and still be in the process of forming. In fact, the totality of space with its vast structures might be infinite. Space literally goes on forever, but the vastness is not the problem. It's the dangers in it. It is the intention of this essay to discuss the ways in which space is a relatively unsafe sp place. We will analyze radiation, gravitational differences, and collisions. We have evolved to survive life on Earth, but life in space is an entirely different environment. So this is a better introduction because there's just more intrigue. The writing is more interesting. It's written in a way that has some style. Um, I mean, we still say what the, what the, uh, it is the intention of this essay to discuss the ways in which space is relatively unsafe space, right? Like there's our thesis statement. We still say the three body paragraphs but it's a slightly more interesting introduction. Let me actually read you while we're doing this. Let me read you the introduction of the extending essay, okay? So this is the, so the very first one, this is our, this is our, our developing. This has really no introduction. The introduction is basically this first chunk, which isn't even a chunk on its own. Then we have this essay. This essay is going to talk about space. Now we've got a proficient one, the one I just read to you. And now I'm gonna read to you the extending one, okay? The vastness, expanse, and uncertainty of space can sometimes lure us into a false sense of security. However, from what astronomers, astronauts, and astrophysicists have discovered about what lies in space and how objects move, it is safe to state definitively and with assuredness that space is an entirely unsafe place. It is estimated that some 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began to form. This is a very long period of time for things to be in motion, but a relatively short period of time for things to settle and stabilize. Adding to the timeline is the expanse, the totality of space with its vast structures might be infinite. This is a really deep thought. Space literally goes on forever. But the vastness is not the problem, it's the dangers in it that are. It is the intention of this essay to discuss the ways in which space is a relatively unsafe place. We will analyze radiation, gravitational differences, and collisions. We have evolved to survive life on Earth, but life in space is an entirely different environment, one that is completely perilous. So again, when you look, Here's my thesis statement. It's the exact same as in my proficient one. What is it? The intention of it, right? Like the exact same thesis statement. That hasn't changed. I'm telling my reader what my three body paragraphs are, and that hasn't changed. All that's changed is the cushioning around it. It's just presented with more beef, right? The, well, sorry for vegetarians out there and vegans. It's presented with more... Um, what can I say? Um, just more style, more um, finesse. So um, let me read now to you. Okay, so actually here, before I read to you, let me show you one of the things that's a little bit different. Here, and okay, let me just back up. Oh, there's so much to say here. When you do a research essay and you're doing your facts and you have to tell the reader where you get your facts from for two reasons. Number one, so that they're not like, hey, this sounds familiar. I think you're copying so-and-so, right? It's to avoid that. You're like, no, I'm not copying. I, I totally took it from that guy. I didn't come up with this at all. It's, it's you're saying, I didn't copy. The second thing you're doing is, what if someone's reading your essay and they're like, oh, that's fascinating. I want to read more about that. You're telling them where they can find that information. So it does two things, okay? So there's, there's a number of different ways you can present that information. And there's, there's different styles. There's the three main ones that I can think of just off the top of my head is Chicago. Um, I'm, I'm just assuming <laughs> it was developed in Chicago, but you never know how these things work. 
And typically you tend to use Chicago formatting in history. And Chicago looks like this, where you have a little number after your sentence and the number corresponds with the footnote down here. I personally love Chicago because I don't really want to read a lot of words that come after my sentence that aren't part of my sentence. And where you'll see that, this is not formatted correctly, but they have two, it's called MLA, which is Modern Languages Association. So you'll see that in like English papers. And then they have APA, which is for psychology. Now you can use APA in a history paper and you can use Chicago in a psychology paper. There's no real rules around it, but you just might find a teacher that's like, oh, I'd rather you use the other one than just go ahead and use the other one, okay? But what happens is in MLA and APA, you end up having your, your reference right behind your quote like it's written into the sentence. It would look a little different than this because this isn't formatted properly, but for me, I find that distracting. So I don't know. I'm going to show you how to use Chicago, but you can look up MLA and APA and, and have it look like this. When I was debating with my friend who preferred, you know, I don't know which one, who cares, MLA, APA, she was saying, well, that she liked it because then you don't have to bother looking at the bottom of the page to get the information, like in Chicago, right? Like, so here, I have my little number one up here. She's like, oh, it's so much work having to look at the bottom of the page to find the fact, and then you got to go up and find where you were. I'm like, mm, it's not that hard. It's just the bottom of the page. She likes having it right after the end of her sentence because then she's like, well, the information's right there. Like, you're just reading it, and you're like, oh, that's where they got the information from. And then you just keep reading. To me, I find that super distracting. So you choose the style that works for you. But this is a proper footnote. Actually, no, it's not a proper footnote. This is, this is a footnote, but it's not a proper footnote. This is not a proper anything. This is just page eight with the name of a short form of the book. Like this is not done properly. Um, so that's a developing essay. At least I've said where I got my fact from, but it's not really correct. This isn't even correct either, but let me show you. So I've got my number one up here, and then my fact is way down here. On my extending essay, this is for grade six, seven, I'd be blown away if you guys knew how to do this, is you're actually gonna look up how to do it properly. This is what it should actually look like. And if anything, there's there's other little things I could do here. Like for example, do you see how this quote or this fact comes from the same source as this fact? I can actually, instead of writing this whole line, I can write in the letters I, B, I, D with a period. And that just means ditto. And so then I don't have to have all of this stuff done. Um, but I left it in anyways, I don't even know. So, but here, here's my number one, here's my fact, right, about when the universe began to form, and there's where I got my fact from. It looks way more professional than this, it's just like a, a short form of a book name, super space, page eight. Not done well, but at least I've got, I've got something in there, right? So to me, grade six, seven, you've got something, we're, we're on a really good track, okay? Um, so, let me read you, um, so I read you the introduction, let me read you, I'm gonna compare Actually, not even going to compare. Let's compare the first body paragraph of developing with, actually, I think I already read this to you, radiation gamma resemblance gamma. No, I didn't. I'm going to read the first body paragraph of a, of a developing essay, and we're going to compare it with the extending, because the main difference for me between the proficient essay and the extending essay is there's more style in the extending one, and there's, there's more to it. There's more explanation more um, connecting sentences, more transitions. There's just more. Um, and it's said in a more elevated vocabulary. So let's read, let's compare. So here's the developing one, paragraph one, compared to paragraph one in extending, okay? So here's our developing. Now I'm gonna talk about radiation. On Earth, we are shielded by the planet's magnetic field and atmosphere from the majority of particles that make up the space radiation environment. In the universe, there is always a cool background radiation. When people think of space travel, they sometimes forget all of the dangerous things in space, like temperature extremes, being alone, and radiation, which can hurt your body. People who deal with radiation get things like cancer and heart disease. Astronauts are in space where there is more radiation, so they will get more cancer and more heart disease. Radiation can also be found in solar wind and other sorts of rays. When a massive star dies out, they sometimes have a long gamma ray burst, and these rays can literally are, sorry, are literally full of radiation. Astronomers say that these rays happen somewhere in the sky about once a day is the universe, or for, that's the sorcery. Uh, these bursts can destroy any biosphere nearby or destroy the ozone layer of a planet for a long time. If there is no ozone, life can die. There's also things called neutron stars. Neutron stars send out beams of radiation that sweep around the sky as they spin. The center or nucleus of an active galaxy emits a staggeringly large amount of electromagnetic radiation. So radiation is everywhere and can hurt you. If you just stay on Earth, you won't get hit with so much radiation. So lots of facts, 
I mean, there's some explanation. There's some, you know, clarification. Um, let's let's see how this feels different. Okay, so this is in what would be a clearly extending essay for like a grade six, seven student, right? Like well above and beyond what not above and beyond. But this this is quite a. I, I would expect most students to have let's say more of the proficient. Okay, so. It is well known that radiation is harmful to the human body, but we are protected from the radiation in space here on Earth. On Earth, we are shielded by the planet's magnetic field and atmosphere from the majority of particles that make up the space radiation environment. The increased and continual level of background radiation in space makes space unsafe. Extreme temperature changes, intense air pressure, and feeling isolated are all things that negatively face astronauts, but one of the more deadly influences is radiation, which can damage the human body. When humans are on Earth, we are not exposed to such high levels of radiation. Venturing out into space exposes us to higher levels of radiation and puts our bodies at risk. What are these dangers? Things such as cancer, heart disease, and eye degeneration are all problems for space travelers. While radiation is always present in space, there are additional sources of lethal doses of radiation. Long gamma ray bursts. LGRBs happen when a massive star collapses and focuses all of its energy and radiation in a single beam. Astronomers notice that some of the GRB somewhere in the sky, sorry, notice some sort of GRB somewhere in the sky about once a day. This means that somewhere in our visible sky, lethal doses of radiation are being tossed around the universe daily. While the bursts only last mere seconds, the energy and radiation destroys biospheres and protective ozone layers in the atmosphere of any surrounding planets or stars. Life is safer on Earth, away from LGRBs. Astronomers have determined that there are no stars with the capability of creating LGRBs near our planet. This means that if we stay on planet Earth, we will be unaffected by these collapsing stars with explosive radiation. However, if we venture out into space and travel farther away from the safety of our own planet, we could potentially be putting ourselves at risk. Where our planet sits, we are fortunate. The center or nucleus of an active galaxy emits a staggeringly large amount of electromagnetic radiation. While the scientific community spends a lot of time adjusting and fine-tuning specialized equipment to get us into space safely, they fail to see how space itself is ultimately unsafe. The radiation levels beyond our atmosphere are deadly. So one of the things that actually is kind of interesting is when in this developing essay we talk about how um, there's a lot of radiation um, and the different, you know, ray bursts can, you know, hurt you. But I wanted to kind of give not necessarily a counter argument, but more context. So I actually took a quote that I wasn't originally going to use. Um, and that's this one here that's saying, like it actually by Earth though we're not near anything that, that none of these rays are anywhere near our planet, and so with this one this kind of paints a picture that oh my gosh like there's bursts going off all the time. This one is like yeah they are but they're not near us. So as long as you just don't leave our planet, not a problem. So it's just a more complete picture. Um, it also hopefully you were able to see was that um, it it had a little bit be not a little bit hopefully better flow, more explanation and the arguments were used, no, the examples were used to support an argument, whereas here it felt more like there was just examples and examples and examples with a little bit of argument in the middle. Um, whereas this, it's like they were perfectly, it's like, you know, ice cream with chocolate sauce. Like they just went together really well. Here it's almost like they had a, like a bowl of ice cream with like three drops of chocolate that you're like, what? <laughs> this isn't, this isn't complete. It's not working. Um, so I'm not going to read you the rest of this, but I'll scroll down right here. You guys can pause and read this if you want. Let me scroll down. You can pause and read this. All right, I'll scroll down. You guys can pause and read this. So um, let's look at where we started. And I can't believe I forgot step five and a half. What a goof. So find your resources. Let's just recap. Find the books, the websites that are going to have enough information for you to use. Next, you have to divide your, your main argument into three body paragraphs. If you can't find enough facts, either either think of a different body paragraph or think of a di different topic, right? It's not working, move on. Next, organize your facts by source, like I did here, right? So take all your books, your websites, take all of your facts and just stick it down by the source. You're not even organizing them yet. Next, now you're organizing them into your body paragraphs, the three things that you chose, right? So sort them. Next thing is you're organizing your facts within, right? So now is when you say, okay, I'm going to take the actual facts and copy paste them and move them around. The next thing, which I left out, step five and a half, is you're going to decide which facts are you going to keep as direct quotes, which facts are you going to work into indirect quotes. After you do that, step six is you then you turn it into sentences. You turn your facts into sentences. When you're finished doing that, 
then you add more transition statements, right? Like maybe you've done it and you're like, oh no, I could do with something here that just kind of links that better or something over here that makes it clearer. When you're finished doing that, you go back through and you're like, okay, what's my thesis statement? My thesis statement is saying, I'm gonna argue that for the most part, safe is, um, space is unsafe. You're gonna go through your essay and be like, did I actually use those words multiple times? Did I really argue my point? Finally, you're gonna tidy up your footnotes. So that's the difference between here and here. So in my proficient essay, this is what my footnotes look like. In my extending, let's just go up here. This is what my footnotes look like. Um, they're they're co they're correct. They're complete. Over here, th this is just my own kind of code, right? Like, why would I have brackets and then no brackets? That's stupid, right? And so, like, big P, little P. That that doesn't. It's 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 sloppy looking, but it's better than over here where I've got nothing, right? Well, actually, well, it's kind of in, involved in the essay, but but this just it's 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 better than nothing, okay? Over here though. I've actually gone through and I've done like the finicky stuff and I hate doing this stuff. This stuff is no fun. Um, but if you don't do it well, you're, you're first of all going to lose marks. And second of all, someone could accuse you of plagiarism, which is actually probably worse because that could like ruin your career. So um, that's the, oh, actually look at that. I clicked on the link and it went right to the website. Um, so that is how we write a research essay. And um, good luck. I wish I could show you start to finish. How I do that but it, it's been hours in the making so I, I don't think you want to watch a six hour video <laughs> but anyways there we are good luck I hope this helps thank you